host, John Brown, Terry O'Neill, and T.D. Trice. Welcome to Uplifting Communities Talk Show. This show is to provide information and real strategies for successful living. I am Terry A. O'Neill. I'm John Brown. And I'm T.D. Trice. Welcome to our program. Today we'd like to talk about building credit and building a relationship that helps you manage your money so that you can have more successful living in your life. Today we have a couple of guests with us, Mike Cepeda and Liz Correct. Correct. And they are with us today to help us discuss and give us more detail about credit, building credit, starting credit, and the strategies you can use to get your foot in the door and work your way towards either getting, a, getting that first home or at least building your equity. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Mike Cepeda. Mike, would you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and where you work and the kind of work that you do? Absolutely. Thanks for having us here today. My name is Mike Cepeda. I work at Answer Home Loans, which is a mortgage brokerage in Roseville, California. I've been doing loan office type work since 1991. Um, which uh, I believe that makes it 27, uh, actually 28 years. That's some yeah. time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It is. I mean, you, yeah. you must have seen a lot of different situations, a lot of different details, and people have had to have presented you with so many different scenarios. How do you manage uh, when you see it, when you see a scenario come at you? Uh, how do you how do you handle that, or do you just know already what you have to do? Well, um, that's a great question. Uh, Every credit report is different mm -hmm. uh, because every consumer situation is unique. So even though I've seen thousands of credit reports over the years, uh, as a loan officer, you never quite have a handle on what a credit report really portrays until you start asking questions and, and you find out uh, you know, what that consumer has been through. because. So many times a credit report will reveal errors mm -hmm. and so many times a credit report will not include positive items that should be on the credit report. While so. we're talking about mm. that, you know, many um, I've been asked about the different types of credit reports and people wonder why so many? Why can't they just report to one? I was just recently asked that question and I couldn't answer that. Why do they have to report to, why can't everything just go on one and go ahead I'll let you respond. okay well that that's a great question and and you know many people have asked me that question over the years and you know the main reason why credit scores um, you know fluctuate and why credit reports um, you know are not accurate is because there are three major credit bureaus that appear on most credit reports mm -hmm. okay there's uh, TransUnion, there's Experian, and there's Equifax. So why do we need three credit bureaus? Well, we really don't need three credit bureaus. It's the creditors that report to certain uh, credit bureaus, um, and that is the reason why um, there's so much fluctuation and that there are three credit bureaus. For instance, um, you know, if, if I was a creditor, you know, if I was a bank, and I issued you a credit card, I may choose to only report your pay history to Equifax. Okay. Why? Because uh, you know, I'm sure it's gonna be more cost effective. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and you know, the policy to report may right. be easier. Okay. So okay. Cr some creditors only choose to report to one. Others mm -hmm. choose to report to all three. Mm -hmm. right. That makes sense. Right, yep. that sounds like, that, that, on, in a sense it sounds like a staffing concern for the business. And also uh, a budget concern if it's a Correct. cost for submitting the data. Yes, right. absolutely right. And Liz, 
Well, I'd like to bring you into the conversation. Okay. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you work and what you do? Uh, my name is Liz Carrett. I am a realtor. I work with Century 21 m and which is here in Sacramento. And um, I've been in, I've got my real estate license in 1992. That was right. 27 wow. years ago. And I can uh, always remember because my oldest son is 27 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Good timing for yeah. both. Yeah. And over those years, I've worked uh, primarily, uh, a lot of my business has been with first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't be discouraged if you don't know where to start because the longest I've ever worked with a client so far is four years. It took four years wow. for her to get into the position to actually be able to, to buy her first home. She just kept at it and, and, and finally got it to, to the point where she could do that. And, uh, and you, you have to start at the beginning though. Right, okay. and, and that's a great point that you make. Mm -hmm. When you're starting at the beginning, what are the, where do you exactly start? You, you know, you, you, you don't know exactly what your score is. You don't know anything about mm -hmm. credit, you know, and people keep throwing the word out there. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean? What is credit? Okay, well, there were, there were two things. Okay, first, if, you, if you're starting out and you have no credit, you've never done anything, you want to be very, very careful with what contracts you sign. Mm -hmm. Because contracts with a telephone company, mm, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you break and don't pay mm -hmm. will give you negative credit. Mm, Contract mm -hmm. with, a, with a cable company and they'll walk in and want you to sign, sign here, you've got the deal of the mm -hmm. century and then all of a sudden you owe them, you know, $250 a month that you don't have mm, wow. mm -hmm. and your credit goes bad before you've even had a credit card, okay. Wow. So yeah. if, you, mm -hmm. if you haven't done that yet, okay, then you want to start off with something like uh, a secured credit card or a, uh, a starter credit card. And the best places to get those would be at your local credit union as opposed to a major bank. Okay. Um, it's easier to join the credit union and open an account. They, they have less required. They usually don't require hardly any funds at all to be kept there. Um, and as long mm -hmm. as you keep your account and don't overdraw it. Mm -hmm. They they usually don't have very many fees, if any at all. Okay. Yeah, I heard somewhere that when you're building your credit, it's always a good idea to have to 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 use what's called a rule of three. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you have a credit limit of three hundred, you'd like to keep it at one hundred or less. Right. Mike Mike should be able to tell more about that. Uh, about that because they do judge your credit core your credit report uh, score mm -hmm. is often dependent on how much you owe as opposed to how much your limits are right and, and to your point JD uh, you're absolutely right the, the rule of three uh, when you have credit credit cards or any type of revolving debt um, you really want to keep the balance at 35 percent or less okay. so um, you know, you mentioned you mentioned uh, three hundred dollars as the limit. You know, you, you do want to keep it at around a hundred dollars or less, um, mm -hmm. because once you reach the threshold of more than thirty five percent, that's when your credit can be affected negatively. So, um, you know, you you can have a, a credit score somewhere in the six hundred range, which is which is okay. You know, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. But if you're really trying to get it up towards seven hundred, which is really considered excellent, then you want to keep those revolving uh, debts down. So uh, how can you? Oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Now. Yeah. It's a thank you, TD, for okay. letting me in. You did <laughs> <on me. laughs> uh, Yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, I know for a fact that a lot of people have credit scores, let's say. Uh, 560 mm -hmm. or 580, maybe 600. Now, tell the audience, with that credit score, can you work with them? Absolutely. And, and Liz Corrette and myself, we've both worked with many, many folks who have scores below 600, um, even uh, people who have scores, you know, sub 500. Jeez. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the truth about those types of credit scores is that um, if you have a credit score that's about 500, 550 in that range, it's likely that you won't be able to buy a house today. Mm -hmm. But there are many things that can be done to get that score increased up in the mid 600 range, um, up towards 700. 
mm -hmm. which is where you really want to be. And, um, you know, like Liz, Liz mentioned, sometimes we work with clients for many years just to help them reach that point. Mm -hmm. So um, every situation is different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, somebody who has a 550 score, uh, they may be able to, to get that score increased within maybe a couple of months. Mm -hmm depending on their situation, depending on their financial situation. They may have uh, some collection accounts on the credit and maybe they're not in a position to pay that off right away. You know, maybe they need to negotiate to pay that off. It may take a couple years to do it, okay? So, it, you know, different situation every time. So uh, some ways, go ahead. Uh, uh, that, that, I don't know uh, if it's a myth or what, Explain to the audience about dispute. A lot of time, people right. say, "Well, dispute it." Right. So, what happens before you buy a home and you have disputes on your credit? What you have to do? Well, that that's a great question because uh, disputed um, items on a credit report have become an issue in the last ten years or so. In the past, if you disputed a credit item, um, it really wouldn't affect the home buying loan application process. But recently, um, what banks and lenders have done is they've looked at items on somebody's credit report that's being disputed, and they want to know what's going on with that account. And so the banks and lenders now really delve into every account that's being disputed, and they want to know, is this really something that shouldn't be on your credit report, or are you just trying to, to get the creditor to go away? Mm -hmm. What if it's legitimate? What, what can they do? So if, if it is legitimate, disputing a credit, re, uh, a credit item on the credit report is the way to go. Because what happens in that process is you write to the credit bureaus and you say, this is not my account. It should not be here. These are the reasons why. The creditor has 30 days to respond. Okay. Okay. And so if it's legitimate, it's likely that the creditor is not going to respond. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's good. Yeah, right. and that's if they good. don't respond, then in another 30 to 45 days, mm -hmm. the credit bureau is supposed to take that item off. off. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, okay. the one more question. <laughs> now, after they take it off, mm -hmm. can they put it back on? That was going to yeah. be my question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. sorry about that. So that's back. I did loans for a couple mm -hmm. of years during that 27, 25, seven year period. Okay, and back back in nineteen ninety eight when I did loans. Mm -hmm. Okay, you had to write to all three credit bureaus at the same time and dispute, or what would happen is um, you would get it taken off of TransUnion, but they share information, and so two months later they would share information with Experian and it'd go back on. Oh. Yeah. Now, does that still happen? It does still happen mm -hmm. occasionally, not as often as it used to, but it's, okay. it still does happen. And, mm -hmm. and what I would suggest is that if, if that does happen, um, you've got a problem creditor and uh, you, you need to talk to a specialist at that mm -hmm. point. Um, somebody even um, in real estate, somebody like mm -hmm. Liz or myself, and you know, we can help and steer you in the right direction. Right. So, mm -hmm. so yes, unfortunately, it does happen occasionally, mm -hmm. um, and you know, at that point, uh, you should you should ask for some additional assistance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you mentioned uh, you know having the credit report. Before we got started, you uh, also mentioned that uh, it's uh, everyone who lives in the United States yes is entitled to have a free credit report every year. That Tell is, us a little bit about that. That, that is absolutely correct, J.D. So the Fair Credit Reporting Act um, says that by law, every American has the, has the right to receive a free credit report with all three credit bureaus uh, once a year. Mm -hmm. okay. Where's that, where, where do they go to get that? So uh, you can go to a website, mm. okay, and that website is www annualcreditreport.com. Nice. Yeah. And, and once a year, you can get a free copy of your credit report with all three credit bureaus reporting. Now, they're not going to try to trick you and charge you, are they? No, um, not, not that particular website. Okay. Um, because um, 
sometimes you'll see commercials on on television um, saying, "Wow, you gotta you gotta see your credit score. This mm -hmm. is how you do it." Right. And, right. And um, a lot of times, if you if you go with one of those websites, um, you're going to be solicited to join a monthly membership mm -hmm. or pay a fee. Yes, they so gotta make careful, their money. Right? Yeah. Right. Just be careful mm -hmm. and read the fine print. That's right. right. Which but is the, something people yeah. often don't like to do. Right. right. As You'll I'm see. <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm listening to you, Mike, I was reminded of, uh, just before I got here, I saw this commercial about, uh, there's the guy and the woman, they're in their apartment, and the woman says, I'm gonna check my score. And so she starts to check her score, and then the guy says, no! <laughs> and the slow motion pancake falls behind his head. And, and then she says, I went to Credit Karma. Da, 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 da. Right, right. Yeah, well, sorry. tell us about Credit Karma, and there's another one, Credit Wise. Mm -hmm. Tell us, tell us what's the difference between com. those mm -hmm. and the right. free credit report, either the annual credit report. What's the difference? Well, well the difference is that uh, the free credit report from www.annualcreditreport.com um, is the vehicle uh, that the federal government points you towards. Okay, so, so there's no hidden agenda um, because uh, free credit or annualcreditreport.com um, is just there so that every consumer can see their credit report. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, Credit Karma, although you know, Credit Karma and Credit Wise do a lot of good things, you know, they're also in it for the marketing purpose. I mean, the money. I mean, it is a profit making mm -hmm. company right. that issues you know, those credit reports. And, and they do have some good suggestions on how to get that credit score increased mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, in the very beginning, mm -hmm. if, like if you don't have any idea what your credit score looks like, mm -hmm. why not get the free one and not get solicited? Right, right, right. 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 Because, yeah. because those things I was telling you earlier, they sign a contract for uh, cable, you sign a contract for a telephone. It's right. the same thing when you sign a contract through Credit Karma, because I, I use Credit Karma, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? just to see if it's going up or down. I know it's not as accurate as Mike's credit report, mm -hmm. but uh, they, they always are telling me to get a credit card, <laughs> okay? Right. And those have annual fees, and they have high interest rates. They're always trying to get me to join um, something that'll make sure that, you know, that'll, that it will, will track my credit and keep me from getting identity theft kind of thing, but they want, they want money for that, okay? Yes. And I don't need to pay for that. Yes. Okay. Now, let, let's say uh, uh, it's, it, this question is directed to either one of you all mm -hmm. that want to answer it. Um, you take a person, you know, that has been divorced, mm -hmm. and they're trying to get their credit back together. Tell, tell us some of the steps that they can uh, get their credit back together because sometimes you know you got a husband they both of y'all on the credit the husband and went out and or the wife then went out and ran everything up or whatever so you know I explain how you can get back on the right track well you know the the divorce situation is is complicated when it comes to credit reports and credit scores because when you are married and you apply and sign a contract jointly with your current spouse, um, your name is on that application and it can never really be removed until that particular debt has been closed, as in paid in full, mm -hmm. negotiated in full, or settled in full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even though um, a judge says, okay, John, you are responsible for the Visa card that has the $8,000 balance, but your wife, who you are divorcing, she's responsible for the JC Penny, Penny's card that has a $200 balance. Well, guess what? Both your names are still on both cards, okay? The creditor, they don't have to listen to the judge, okay? Mm. They don't have to listen to mm. the judge, okay? They can still contact you for a debt that you signed your name on. Mm -hmm. Because when you sign your name on that application, you don't say, there's no clause that says, oh, 
I'm not responsible for this anymore if mm -hmm. I decide to divorce my wife. Mm -hmm. So do you guys yeah. work with a lot of um, clients uh, well, in real estate, mm. we'll say, because there's so many people, Everyone. whether it's divorce or just, you know, you come to a, uh, a stage in your life for mid 40s, 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. they're they're rebuilding, they're starting mm -hmm. over, reestablishing their credit, and they may have owned a home in the past, mm -hmm. but they they want to own a home again, but their credit is low. Have you guys worked and oh, possibly yes. the situation scenario that John mm -hmm. mentioned? Have yeah. you worked with a lot of? Oh clients? yes, we've worked with uh, with a lot of. I'd say we've seen everything except that's not true. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when, Mike, when Mike said that every every uh, every person's situation is different, right. yeah. After 27 years, I have a friend who's been in the business for 40 years, and we get together, and still say, "Have you ever heard of this?" Oh, okay. Wow. And it's the same with credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can't we can't give you specific right. information, but the first thing you want to do is see that credit report. Mm -hmm. The real one, mm -hmm. not the credit karma, not the um, the credit wise or credit wise, right. but the one from annual credit uh, annual credit report dot com. Is that correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and and then go from there, and you can talk with a, a realtor who has experience with loans or a loan officer to see what to do about that. You can call those creditors and try to negotiate those. You don't necessarily have to pay them the whole amount. You can ask them if they will settle for a smaller amount, okay? You can, uh, if it's too overwhelming, bankruptcy may be a better option for you. Sometimes bankruptcy looks better on a home loan than, um, you know, it's, it, sometimes it just works better because two or three years from now you can apply for a home loan. And if you built your credit after the bankruptcy correctly, then you'll have that good credit score. Wow, mm. that's interesting because a lot you know, of people have a Sometimes fear. it's better to pay them off and to work without the bankruptcy. Sometimes it's better to go with the bankruptcy. And that's where you, you, know, you want to get counsel from uh, a credit counselor or a, uh, a loan officer, a credit mm. counselor, or a, uh, the, the, credit, uh, the people who help you fix your credit. Now, what is the, uh, mm -hmm. the biggest problem that you guys have a encounter on uh, on getting people homes. What is the what is the biggest problem? Is it um, you know lack of inventory, or what? Down lack payment. of income. <laughs> <laughs> lack of income. I you know I I would say that it is credit history mm -hmm. that is the biggest problem mm -hmm. in an applicant getting qualified mm -hmm. to purchase a home. Mm -hmm. Because they haven't proven over that they can make regular payments over time. Mm -hmm. Correct. Which is what credit is. Correct. And what about the FICA score? Because FICO. We yeah, the FICO score. What? Yeah. What? A, what is that? Could you explain that briefly? Uh, I, I thought FICO was uh, French, Indian, Chinese. <laughs> <originals>. <laughs> People, Every time people I hear wanna... FICO, I'm yeah. like, well, what's that supposed to mean? You know, right, Ford, right. Uh, incomes <laughs> charged <laughs> over. Uh, but really, what's FICO? It's a what's foreign FICO? language, right? Yeah, what, like is, a, what, right. what does FICO stand for and uh -huh. what is FICO? You want to take that, Liz? Or? I, I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> and, Mike, do you I, have know, an idea I know what, what, what it is. is. Okay. Well, well, you know, uh -huh. uh, yeah, over the decades of looking at FICO scores, um, I, I, I can honestly say that I don't know what FICO you don't know what the for. acronyms for. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I don't either. Yeah, it's it's an interesting. We'll have to get the answer to that for okay. you. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll look that up and then we'll put uh, it on a lower yeah. third for you and guys, that, that so just you can see what the show, abbreviation yeah. is. Yeah, that but, just goes to show Mike and I don't know everything, but boy, <laughs> we know how to find out. <laughs> right. Okay, right, right. Uh, my understanding mm -hmm. of FICO, though, I, I'm not exactly sure what the acronym is, mm -hmm. but my understanding of FICO is that it is the it is the middle score your your middle score from the three right. credit bureaus that's correct so they take a score from Experian from TransUnion from Equifax correct and that middle score is your FICO score mm -hmm. all right that's it okay, okay. That's in what other words what you're saying you got um, a 600 a 700 and a 650. And a 650. So what are they going to go with? The 650, the 650 is okay. your FICO score. Okay. Right. That's what they're going to count when they that's, look at your mortgage. That's uh, absolutely your correct. Mortgage application. That's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. and, and FICO, um, even though we don't know 
what it stands exactly. for, <laughs> um, it is actually um, the score that uh, Experian calls their scoring model. Mm -hmm. Equifax calls their scoring model Beacon, and TransUnion calls their scoring model Empirica. But over time, everybody got used to saying FICO mm -hmm. because that was the easiest one to remember. So it's the it, Kleenex it, of credit yeah. scores. It is the Kleenex. Oh, okay. of, yes, there you go. There you go. So, um, but but in essence, it, it doesn't matter what, what bureau calls what score. It, it's it's a collection of you know what shows up on your credit report. A combination of um, do you make your payments on time? Um, do you have low balances on your revolving debt? Um, do you have collection accounts? And um, do you have um, a mix of credit accounts. So you have some revolving um, credit cards on your credit report, but that's it, mm -hmm. okay? okay? Well, you know, these, these um, credit bureaus, they wanna see that you've got um, something else, like an installment account. A car loan is an installment oh account. Mm -hmm. something I, wanted that, to, you know. I wanted to bring up, I just thought of something I really mm -hmm. wanna bring up about car loans. One of the hardest things for people to correct on their credit report is a, for, uh, 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 a repossessed car. Mm -hmm. Because when, when the car company repossesses that car, no matter what they tell you when you give them the keys, they rarely sell the car for the amount that you owe. And if you owe them $20,000 and they only sell the car for 10, mm -hmm. you now have a $10,000 repossession collection on your credit report and that's really hard to get off because it's a lot of money and you have nothing for it, okay? So be very careful when you get a car loan. Very that, good, good to yes. know, Liz. Mm -hmm. good to okay. know. Thank you for that. That's one of the most difficult. With a bankruptcy, you just wait. Okay. Okay, and you do good in between. But with that, that if you don't want to do a bankruptcy, that car repossession, have you found the same thing, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Other things can get that big, but car, mm -hmm. car repossessions are the largest that, that I usually see. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank yeah. you for sharing that. So we're gonna wrap up today's show. We appreciate you watching uh, our show today. We hope that we've shared some information with you that is beneficial, that you can marinate over and think over and eventually take the strategies you need to take in order to have more successful living. With that, my name's T.D. Trice, and our guests, Mike Cepeda and Liz. Correct. Correct. <laughs> I'm gonna get it right, I swear. <laughs> and additional hosts, Terry O'Neill and John L. Brown. And we want to thank you for watching Uplifting Communities. Community. All you people, come on, yeah. Uplifting. Uplifting.